Building 2283, Kadena Air Force Base, from Jonathan. Before I get to my military experience, I have one other story I'd like to tell that will always stick with me. Most of my paranormal experiences have happened around dreams, either falling asleep or waking up. One summer, when I was in my teens, I dozed off in my bed which faces a window. I woke up, then found myself affected by full-on sleep paralysis. I couldn't move and remember making a weak, mewling sound as I tried to call out for help, because I clearly saw a shadowy torso in my window, head, shoulders and two arms hovering in my second-story window. It was probably only a few seconds, but it felt like minutes were stretching by. One minute I was struggling against sleep paralysis, the next I violently tumbled off the bed. I've had several other sleep-related experiences, but I told you that to tell you about an experience where I was totally awake, so you know that I know the difference between a dreamlike state and a waking state. I was stationed at Kadena Air Base on Okinawa, Japan in 1993 and had an opportunity to visit Building 2283, one of the many strange places on that base. Ancestor worship is a major component of Okinawan culture, and there are family tombs literally scattered around the base. Building 2283 was a family housing unit until the 1970s, when, allegedly, a man killed his home family, and then himself. After years of complaints about paranormal activity, and I believe one more murder, the Air Force turned it into storage. When I was there, it was used to store lawn equipment and old IT gear that wasn't quite ready for the scrap heap. A buddy of mine, Brian, told me that when he was in there, he heard children laughing and saw things moving. If I recall correctly, there was a childcare centre nearby, but he claims it was on a swing shift in the middle of the night when he was there. Of course, being young and stupid, we all laughed at him, but he dared us to go in. Being young and even stupider, I took him up on his offer in exchange for some free drinks. So before we went downtown that night, we paid a visit to building 2283. It was a pretty unassuming building, in that it looked like all the other buildings around it, save for some security bars on the windows. Since his job required him to have regular access, he had a key and opened it for me. When I went in, Man, all the idiots outside making boo noises went away. There was something oppressive in that house. I could feel it in my bones. It was summer, and the AC wasn't running this building, so you'd expect it to be hot and stuffy. But that house was cold. The hair on my arms stood on end, and I just stood there. My eyes water when I see paranormal activity, like on video or television, and my eyes were free-flowing. My buddy told me that people see shit in the kitchen, so of course I went there. Before I could flip on the light though, I felt a blast of cold hair like I was in front of an air conditioner, and standing in front of the kitchen sink was what appeared to be a figure in a bathrobe. I ran out of there as fast as I could, and told my friends what I had seen. Of course they just laughed. But Brian and I shared a look, and he just shook his head slightly. I learned later that people had reported seeing a woman washing her hair in the sink area, and I really think that's what I saw that night. I've heard they've since torn it down, but looking back I wish I'd gone back, if only to prove to myself what I'd seen. So, thank you, Jonathan. And yeah, I, from what I was able to gather, that building was turned up or be torn down in 2009. But... What's kind of interesting is I, I, the watering eyes thing sort of brought back something for me. And I realized I actually remember that from when I was a kid. I would have these weird dreams where my eyes were watering so much I couldn't open them. Mm. And it was usually accompanied by this bright white or yellow light. I don't, I, I don't remember any more than that. It just, that sort of dug out this, this weird old memory for me. Hmm. Yeah. Well, it, it, it struck me because... I'm trying. I'm, I think I remember correctly. I believe that's where Art Bell was stationed. Oh, was it? Mm. When he did his his tour of duty in the Air Force, I believe he was out there for quite a while in Okinawa. Interesting. Well, it, it's got a very very storied history of haunting. I mean, we probably could have done a whole episode just on Kadena. I mean, it would have been a bit samey after a while, but 
um, that site, especially building, uh, is it 2283 is so well known. Uh, yeah. I found this article on, um, stars and stripes and basically they said that, uh, there have been times where they would do tours and there was one time where there were about 30 people gathered in the backyard to hear the tour guide, uh, give the, like the spooky stories and the phone in the house started ringing. And the, the tour guide, her name was April Marling. She actually said that as far as she knew, there was no phone line connected there. It was not something done to like enhance the spookiness of the tour. It was just, yeah, all of a sudden, now it sounds like, now it sounds creepy. <laughs> and I guess that there was another tour in 1990 where uh, a, group, a tour group saw a curtain open right in front of them. <laughs> And I guess that was the end of the tour. Everyone, everyone was done. Everyone wanted to go home after that. <laughs> and I, I seem to recall reading somewhere that there is some, some thought that uh, this was a site of a murder, yeah, this building, but there doesn't seem to be any any sort of um, official history to back that yeah. up. And I think it was We Are the Mighty did an article on this and they reached out to the military and I don't think they ever got a response about it. Mm. Oh, like I can see why they wouldn't want to have a real in-depth conversation about, you know, a family murder on one of their bases. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. That's not, but to be fair, there is, there is always a high level of, of tension running in military bases anyway. You know, you have got some highly strong people in all parts of the armed forces. So it wouldn't be the first base where a, where a tragedy has occurred, unfortunately. Oh, is that is that something you've heard before? Yeah, we've had a few here. We've had a, um, a a spate of alleged suicides here on a particular base, which um, is leaving people deeply suspicious, shall we say? Oh, interesting. So that that's ongoing. Mm. Oh, yeah, yikes! Yeah, yeah it's uh, it's one of those where um, some of the people couldn't possibly have killed themselves in the way that the official narrative has said. Right. Kind of like a, like a, he shot himself five times in the head kind of thing. Yeah. Or they used a particular rifle and their reach wasn't long enough to position it in the particularly way, the way that the, the, uh, wounds have been discovered. So, uh, the are we sure are Courtney not... Love didn't kill them? <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Yeah, that's fair. That's that's a responsible thing to say, Paul. For once. <laughs> uh, just looking back at my notes, I, I made a mistake. It was actually Stars and Stripes, not We Are the Mighty, who reached out to uh, the military regarding w the uh, murder at Kadena and never heard back. Mm. Um, but apparently th there was a, a, an interview with a guide, uh, Setsuko Inafuku, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. My apologies. But uh, this woman was saying that they think many sites on the island were built on or near ancient burial grounds. And they think that they apparently, because apparently the Okinawan culture is very, uh, very, very, very spiritual. And I guess ancestor mm -hmm. worship is a big part of it. Yeah. And yes, so, it yeah, they, so they really believe these sites are sacred and they believe that if you build on them, you are you are pissing off these, these ancestors, these, these spirits, uh, supposedly they're, according to the same guide, city officials believe a tomb across the street from that haunted house belonged to an Okinawan samurai warrior. Uh, whether or not, you know, samurai ghosts are particularly angry is not specified, but supposedly there are stories on the base of seeing a, a spectral samurai, mm. which would be goddamn terrifying. Yes. Yes, it would. Imagine that, you're just minding your own business, you're sneaking a smoke, you know, away from the missus, and all of a sudden you just see Toshiro Mifun riding through on a horse. <laughs> it's like those two chaps who were attacked by spring Hill Jack in uh, Aldershot Barracks in the 1880s. I actually don't know this story. I know spring Hill Jack, but I, I don't know this particular encounter. Yeah, there was um, a, an incident where sentries were assaulted by a uh, what they claimed was was Spring Hill Jack, who was basically sat on top of their sentry box uh, and uh, causing mischief and attack, scratching them and uh, and ran off and hopped off laughing manically 
disappearing into the woods. And it happened on two occasions, I think. Um, and they were convinced it was Spring Hill Jack. Because um, it, it's the kind of situation where you think, well, perhaps it was a hoax. But then again, you're talking about somebody assaulting two armed sentries. So I think if they'd had the opportunity, they'd have probably shot him up the ass. <laughs> it does seem like a dangerous hobby. Mm. Or stupid. Well, yeah, or, or stupid. Yeah, or both. Could be both. Yeah, yeah. So I like the uh, the person in Sheffield in the, um, was it the 1850s? Somebody up here tried to pretend they were spring Hill Jack and got cornered by a group of locals and, and uh, got leathered. <laughs> oh, that city never fails to deliver. <laughs> Just um, around the corner from where I am, actually. Great naturally, Park. Naturally. I, actually, I, I think we, we might have some listeners who don't know who or what Spring Hill Jack was. Do you mind quickly giving them a refresher? Yes. So Spring Hill Jack was a terror of Victorian London who appeared, I think, about 1830s and was notable for attacking people, sometimes in the street. Sometimes he would be cheeky enough to knock on their doors and as they opened it, he would scratch at them. He had a Ponchant for attacking young women. Witnesses claimed, then there's some confusion about this. They're not sure if it was artistic license by the reporters or the witness, but one particular witness who survived one of the assaults claimed that he'd shot blue flames into her face. I've um, heard the blue flame thing. That was that was something I, I briefly recall being associated with Spring Hill Jack, and I thought it was interesting because so many other high strangeness encounters involved blue flame. Mm. So there was that. Um, people described it in looking like he was wearing sort of oil skins and strange a strange helmet and had sharp talons and bounced away um, as though he was like a, a, a human kangaroo hybrid. Imagine that mating session. <laughs> well, not going on the latest videos I've seen from Australia, the last thing you want to be doing is getting amorous with a kangaroo. I just imagine some guy just covered with hockey pads and Sears catalogs. Anyways, let's not dwell on this. It's like that guy who invented that bear-proof suit. <laughs> now you know why he did it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. The Hugh Bear. Yeah. <laughs> the Bearman. <laughs> Extreme furries. <laughs> You know, I, I had a, I was talking to Chris from Genki Genki Panic via email the other day, and he mentioned he, he listens to the show and, you know, quite often in the car with his kids, and he said, thanks for keeping the show clean. So, sorry, Chris. I screwed that up. Educational. Yes. Yes. You learned what podcasts not to listen to, kids. That's what you learned today. <laughs>